Star Trek gifts and the prodigy clock ticks today on yeah Trekland Tuesdays live with me Dr. Trek Larry Nemechek coming at you here from the heart of Trekland through Portal 47 the Trekland tracks just bringing you some sanity clarity and a bigger picture in all things Star Trek if you're watching us later hi later YouTube if you're watching us later that's great please leave a comment below when you feel like it or if you don't if you're with us live on a Tuesday afternoon though you can jump right into the chat that you'll see uh, preserved as well on the full live all right please do that please like and subscribe on the YouTube as you can I hope you didn't have two hours we had a quiet quiet holiday here one set of kids were no, I had not seen them yet they were sick everybody else is scattered uh, yeah, it was a quiet day here. I did make some of my mom's uh, Jello cranberry salad for the first time in ages. Quiet day, um, catching up on some work and Star Trek also. It's not as horrible as it sounds. And one of the things was, as we do at least once a month, I try, is with my Trekland e-news list, my email list, try to do a poll. And this was, uh, this was a lot of fun. Now, I'm going to tell you the results of the poll and the question after i also remind everybody what yesterday was aside from christmas for those who celebrate it was december 25th for those who don't but for everybody it was the debut or the re-debut of net of uh, prodigy star trek prodigy de debut on netflix got a lot of storm i think there was a pretty good splash a publicity splash now I didn't go. I was a little disappointed that Prodigy wasn't showing up on the left side of my new on. Well, it did for a while. It did for a while. What I'm curious about is if everybody did what I did, and I've seen some of them on the socials, where you just turn Prodigy on and let it run all day. And I say that not because it's hot or makes you feel cool or you're doing your part, you know, like contributing to the banner the Save Star Trek Prodigy banner that flew, which was awesome, which was important. Got a lot of eyeballs outside the Trek world. And that's what a lot of this is about. It's we know, we not only know what Star Trek is and what Star Trek fandom is, but we also know when it has Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek on the label, 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 <laughs> it's, it's in there for good. No Star Trek ever goes away talk to the original series about talk to the animated series about that 60 nearly 60 years and counting here once you're in you're in talk to the entire star trek family the actors yes and the creatives some of us are trying to make sure it happens so unlike most anything else on tv if it's got star trek on it it's going to be around and that is why it's not just to show off. It's not just to feel good. It's not just to feel active and powerful. You watch Prodigy on Netflix right now. Or, hey, if you're not even home, get the app on your phone, on your pad. Even if you're not watching, and I don't mean to say this insincerely, get it rolling because that's the way the game works. And I say that because there have been numerous, numerous uh, stories out. Every year, the Netflix fans of shows, uh, fans of shows on Netflix, hang on. You know, the whole streaming world thought that there was this ironclad Bible. Oh, it's 10 episodes a season, maybe 8, maybe 12. But for the most part, all but the extreme hits only run at most three seasons. Okay, well, the Emperor has no clothes. <laughs> The masters of streaming have been exposed as not really knowing what the hell they're doing. Witness everything exposed by the strikes this year. But one thing we do know, <clears throat> and Netflix has kind of wrote the model on this just in the last 10 years, apparently has been published. Netflix makes a decision about renewing a series within the first 30 days. Within the first 30 days, they've decided whether a show is going to, to be renewed or not. Sometimes they will even go ahead and just renew it for two seasons and let the creators go ahead and get their two seasons out. Now, what that smells like to me is you're going to get three. So if you want to have a nice, happy bow at the end, we're going to tell you up front, which is nice, I guess. 
Um, who knows? It presumes not going past three years. What's, you know, well, it's damning with fake praise. It's okay, fine. This is the last present you're ever going to get from me, so it's a doozy. I, I don't know. That changes. And the strike uprooted a lot of this kind of thinking. But still, looking at, looking at articles, see, they, they blend that in. You'll see the breathless online stories about here's what's been canceled from Netflix and here's what we know and here's what's on the bubble. Nobody ever says on the bubble anymore because it's not week to week ratings, sadly. Here's what, you know, well, there's one. And now this is from January 23. So it's pre-strike. Article in Forbes. Here's how long it takes Netflix to renew or cancel new shows on average. They actually plotted the I don't know, 40 shows, 40 series, animated and live action, adult and kids both of the animation. They plotted, some of these articles have done this. They plotted series on Netflix from their debut drop to, I hate the verb drop, from their debut appearance to the formal announcement of cancellation or more likely renewal. Some things are just kind of drift canceled. They're just vague canceled. They never, you never hear. What happens more likely, and you remember this happened with Strange New Worlds and also Picard over at Paramount Plus. They announce the renewal in that first throw of the first throws of success, which at the time seems weird. I mean, I'm happy for our Trek shows, but it seems, but apparently, and the way the street, you know, we're used still with streaming, we're used to one week at a time, but Netflix will drop everything at once. So they figure it's either going to be hot early on or not at all. And we waited for Prodigy week by week, but this is a slightly different critter. And no, I don't mean <laughs> a Val Nukat. No, this is Prodigy has been dropped all at once, like a standard Netflix show, even though we have all been dealing with it week to week to week. A lot of Trek fans didn't, and now you can binge it. But the important thing is here, the world at large can binge it all at once. Now, that's cool. That's cool for all of us having re-binge watch parties. It's cool for all of us trying to get our lagging Star Trek friends over there. Or maybe you are a lagging Star Trek fan. And now you can see it all at once. So this is like, not unlike when Netflix has picked up other existing shows, Suits, I don't, and brought them in at once. Now, what's important here is they didn't just bring up an existing show. They also brought up an existing show with a second season that we have not seen, which is an odd, an odd bird here. We'll make it suddenly new again, hot and fresh to Netflix. Cool. I'm wondering if they will drop it all at once or string it out week to week, the way we're traditionally having Star Trek. But, you know, Netflix is their own critter. They don't care what the rest of Paramount Plus does or the or Paramount Plus does. What the rest of Star Trek happens, they don't care. They're going to do it by the Netflix model, especially being animation. So when we get season two, will everybody watching and commenting just have a meltdown? We will see. We will see what Netflix does with their screeners on our end. We'll see what they do. But that's a whole. But even beyond that, we're sitting here right now. All the social media splash yesterday Prodigy was trending. Star Trek Prodigy trended for a bit off and on yesterday. So yay, fandom. But we're waiting to see what happens with season three. Yeah, there's a season two we haven't seen, but we're jump-starting. We're leapfrogging all this to get to season three. And that's what, since Netflix is committed to season one and bought the unseen season two, which was a no-brainer, obviously, it's been made. We're banking on season three, and that's why this, you know, what they're looking at right now, they're not worried about renewing for season two. That's in the bank. It's in the can. They're worried, or we're worried, and they're concerned about a season three. And so this is something different for Trek fandom, having series, having series that, that spool out, even though in the streaming era, we got early renewals. What you got to know is... And if you've seen some of the talk by some of the Star Trek pundits, yes, it's not just for show. It's not just a fad. It's not just like some kind of social media gimmick that everybody's doing. This is why everybody is encouraging you to watch, or at the very least, let the meter run. 
we put our TV in the back. I put this, I did a short little reel yesterday on Instagram. We put the back TV on Prodigy. Now, after a few episodes, they'll ask you if you want to keep watching. Are you really watching? And of course you say yes. But there's also an option to say, stop asking me, just let it run. <laughs> and you can do that. Now, is this disingenuous? Well, we're not taking a census. We're not doing income taxes here. We're trying to get a season three for Prodigy, which it deserves. And if we had time to, if the network had time to promote and amid its other 40 shows, if they had time to promote promote Prodigy for a month or two or three and lead into a big finale episode, that would be one thing. But as we know, one thing happened to Prodigy was he got the short shrift on promotion, even over on Paramount+. Plus. That's why there was no two seasons of 10. The network, I've been told, didn't have to spend on promoting a season premiere. Yeah, that's why some people actually lagged on Prodigy in the middle until, you know, the silver lining of cancellation was that people started to pay attention. Not unlike a certain original series, I remember. Oh, I've read about it anyway. Wasn't there at the time. So, yes, it's not just for show. It's not just for social media clicks. It's for Netflix clicks. As much as you can. And if the idea of letting your phone run, weirdly, or your tablet, maybe, your iPad, whatever, if not your TV, if that freaks you out, then, you know, do what you're comfortable with. But if there's any way to add to the metrics of Prodigy right now, all 20 episodes, not in a month, right now. There's even some talk and word, and this is not out there. You know, the strikes forced streamers, and Netflix has now started talking about the popularity of its shows, something they never did before. But the transparency that the accounting for reruns that all the strikes and the settlements forced someone at Netflix has decided we might as well make that public. It would probably become public anyway. <laughs> Once you're dealing with SAG and the WGA, the actors and the writers and their accountants and their union, and then the individual members, and they compare notes, looking at their checks and seeing the data. It's not exactly like dealing with thousands and thousands of people. This is going to be, you know, a secret much longer anyway. So at least this old pair, one thing the strikes have done is maybe blow up this old paradigm of the secret streaming ratings. Whoa. That's what, that's another thing. But here's Netflix and I guess good on them thinking rather than just have that dribble out, they're going to get on top of it and make some hash out of that. They're going to get on top of that and make something out of it, make gold out of the information for publicity and promotional purposes, right? So we'll be seeing maybe sooner than we know just how well Prodigy did in, in a quasi metric way. And if until then, at least you, you might be able to watch, is that how it works? And that how it works when you flip on to Netflix and here's uh, suggested for you or new this week, you know, when you see the new, lineup of, of icon boxes. If Prodigy is over to the left, that's awesome. And of course they have number one, but the number, the number one this week, the top 10, those are only movies. As far as I know, there's no TV or animation list. If there is somebody correct me. So that's why it's important to jump in now, if at all possible, just let your little Netflix race. And if you're watching something else on Netflix, if you've got a second device that streams of any kind or shape or size, let it roll. It's not fair, but we've got to strike fast while the iron is uh, has its meter running for that all-important season three. That's what I wanted to say about that. Just to add to all the hoopla and hysteria about Prodigy being on yesterday. Aside from the fact that, yeah, if you got a chance to sit down with, if not your little ones, your nieces, nephews, your grandkids, your friends' kids, whatever it is, if you've got some six-year-old, seven-year-old, Cadet Alice was fine with it. When she, we started watching when she was five, and as it strung out, she turned seven last spring. We actually had a couple the last three or four of, of the back 10 we watched after she turned seven and she's getting a little smart and sad, but even in the beginning and some of the emotion is a little, the Borg are pretty scary. 
And some of the chases even for a five and six year old are a little scary. It was a healthy scary. Having somebody there to talk with it, um, talk about it with later on and process it was, was fine. It was cool. Yes. If you can bring your, but again, Prodigy is not just for kids. And the further you get into season one, the further you get into the second 10, your jaw will drop several times as you start adding up the math and uh, doing the dates and realizing what's going on in the background with the rest of the Federation. Remember, we are, what, five, six, seven years before the, we're seven years before the Romulus uh, supernova. So even things related to the Romulan rescue attempt and the black hole are even lurking in the background here. It's amazing. Much less everything else that you, you, you thought that some of the Easter eggs were only for lower decks in animation and you get several, even some in the pilot as star Wars as the pilot is, you get some um, broader Star Trek universe bits that if you're a fan, you can tell everybody in your, in your group who may not get what a Cation is or even what a Kazon is. I know, I know. Raises a lot of questions. The Delta Quadrant suddenly became a much smaller place just years after Voyager's return. That's part of the fun of unspooling this season. Uh, can't wait for it. Can't wait for it. And as we've been watching, the Hagemans and Aaron Wonky have all talked about the, the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted on the second season finale. So it's sitting there. It's out of the oven, ready to be served, hopefully sometime next spring, if not later, and we'll see how that goes. So, yes, there's the big media present to everybody. Prodigy back on Netflix. But everybody, hopefully, if you're celebrating, and even a lot of people who don't celebrate Christmas still do gift exchange. And here's the other thing. Again, if you were on my news list, you had a chance to jump in on this, this issue's poll, a little quick survey, and this one was not broken. That always helps. This is a very simple one. And I've done this a couple of Christmases ago. I wanted to bring it back because it ties into uh, our friends in Star Trek merch or even our fan friends who are into Etsy. No, I ask a very simple question. Are you planning to ask for something of Star Trek on your wish list, on your gift list, or and or are you giving Star Trek to a friend, family or friend member? Basically, is Star Trek factoring into your holiday gift giving coming or going? And it was so I had five. I had five options. You would think there'd be four, but I came up with the fifth. <clears throat> So I have, yes, I have Trek items on my own wish list, but I'm not giving them. We had, I have Trek items on my own wish list, but not giving. Uh, I am giving Star Trek gifts, but not asking. Uh, yes, both giving and asking. <laughs> and none for me either way, which you would think would be the natural four. I added a fifth. I said... None for me, but within my family, yes. My, my nodal group, my nuclear hub. So here's what's, um, here's what's interesting. Nobody on my list who answered, and we, what did we do? We didn't have a huge turnout. We had about, uh, oh, yeah, only about 5%, which in the holidays isn't bad. It was enough to make a definite trend line, I'll say that. So here we go. None for me, but in the family, uh, nobody, nobody said that. <laughs> um, the next one. So I had 12% say I am giving Trek gifts, but not asking, which makes sense. Uh, then the next group, 22% said, yes, I'm giving Trek and I am asking Trek. Now, most of these people answered before, I think before Christmas Eve. So whether you do Christmas Eve or Christmas morning or Christmas afternoon, presents opening, I don't know. Most of these were, were, um, were the last one was cast this morning. Yay. <laughs> so everybody else, though, was uh, like Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Christmas Eve Eve. So we had 12% say I am giving but not asking. 
we had 22% say, yes, I am both giving and asking. I had a whopping nearly 32% though say, none for me either way, which is fine. That's cool. Interesting. So nearly a third didn't involve Trek giving whether it was, you know, we didn't make a distinction between licensed merchandise or Etsy crafts or homemade goodies, you know, Delta cookies. I don't know. So, yeah, so a little under a third said nothing at all. And the biggest chunk was just a little over a third, 34% said, yes, I do have Trek items on my wish list, but I'm not giving any. So that was a healthy chunk, though. 22% said, yes, I'm giving and asking. I'm sorry, I say healthy. I'm talking about just numbers. I'm not talking about your attitudes being healthy or not healthy. Everybody is, of course, free to do what they want to do. I was just curious to see. I know when I ask late, so that's on me. But I was just curious to see what the gift giving was going to go with as far as Trek folks. So there we go. That's that. Again, I hope everybody had a safe and warm, and you know, and if you were, if you found yourself by yourself, by yourself, hope you reached out, hope you, you know, there's always Zoom now. There's always places to get to. Nobody does, nobody deserves to be alone totally, unless, unless that's your choice. A lot of people enjoy the quiet out of the crazy, but hopefully you found whatever suited you here at this time of year, because it can be rough on people. I know. Hopefully we, as I say, we had a quieter one here than usual, but we, the former assistant script coordinator and I had had each other and had some folks too at the same time. And the yeah, Asher TV. And so those Christmas Eve football games didn't quite go the way I wanted, but that's another story. That's another podcast. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here on a Tuesday again. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to say, again, what was lost in all the the, the uh, prodigy hoopla was that there was a method to the madness, aside from the yay factor of having everybody blitz as much as they could. Blitz watch. That's one beyond binge watch, I think. Blitz watch. I just created that hashtag blitz watch. There you go. But listen, thank you, thank you. As we wrap up this year, we're going to have another, we're going to have a look back episode next week. I have a couple things in mind for next week and a couple surprises. It's still in the planning stage. We'll be doing some more look back. But as I look back right here, I have to thank all of our Patreon folk for helping out. I've kept the Patreon small, not by design. I've kept it humble. And many of you have jumped in over the years, and a lot of people have stuck with it. I thanks thanks to everybody who has been in my Patreon at any time, and a, a huge thanks to everybody who's in right now, obviously. So yes, thank you, Diana Hopkins, Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, Anne Marie Siegel, Justin Porteous, Galinda Bruton, Chris Jiggins, Pranakasha Productions, Comedy Forecast, and Andrew Jasimski, and then our live wires, our big second tier giving thanks so much rob mclean byron bailey jr pool halbert gunjansen andrew who nc david dave gregory i can call you david can i uh tobias rex donna s runyon and casey shafsky thanks so much everybody and if you're curious about this if you're new going into the new year yeah it's just five and ten bucks patreon.com slash trekland live uh, that reminds me, I've got to get the new batch of original Portal 47 earlier year backstage interviews out to all the TTLers. That's the that's the big break there in the five and the ten. Kept it simple on purpose, gang. The other thing I kept simple is I know talking about who had Trek on their gift list or who was giving. Some folks might have had Trek on their gift list and didn't wind up with anything. Well. If Santa left you off your gift list, let me just suggest Portal 47. These specials are still up and they're fine for you, yourself, and you also. It doesn't have to be for somebody else. If you really want the box, well, we'll send the box anyway because you've got some swag in there too. But this special is going to be going on through New Year's Day. So jump in there too. And of course, if you don't want the big special, but you just want to come in the normal subscription, that's an option too. 
You know, Portal 47 is your mini con all year long. We have a, it's up to 10 features a month. That includes the recordings of the lives. We have two round tables. If you can come to the midday one with the Europeans, it's like, it's so great to be hooked in with your global fellow Trek fans. That's cool too. And of course, our guest night tomorrow night is going to be the great Mike Sussman. If you're in Portal 47, that's Wednesday night. It's going to help us clean out a wonderful, a wonderful 2023. Uh, I, I don't want to judge among all our guests. We had so many awesome ones. We had so many from the current series this year, which is great. We started this when there was no current Star Trek. Starting our ninth year and helping us kick off the ninth year for Open House. I hope you made it live. And if you didn't, I hope you can make it live next year. The great Nick Meyer. And we actually talked about something newer than the Wrath of Khan and Star Trek VI. His con miniseries and made some headlines. So thank you, Tony, for doing the story there. Hey, um, and everybody that picked it up, you know, in the copycat version, everything is so incestuous in Star Trek news, but that's the interwebs. Thank you so much for that. And yeah, as you look at your new year and you want to do a little traveling and you come to LA, don't forget, we will set you up with your own customized away mission. Trekland Treks, treklandtreks.com. Check it out. I will help you set it up. There's over 50 places now to pick. Some of them I have not been to. I'd love to go research it. Some of them are your old favorites. Whatever it is, we'll pick you up. We'll get you back to your hotel. We'll wrangle your props and your cosplay. Take your pictures. Make it a memorable day that you'll never forget. And, you know, it is L.A. It's a little on the chilly side times, but January and February... Half the time, it's wonderfully warm and liable to be much, much more hospitable than where you are. Anyway, it's a brand new year coming up and love to, love to, love to get back uh, sharing those away missions with everybody. All right. That's going to do it for today. That's going to do it for 2023. Now, hang on. Uh, if you're with us live, we'll be back here with the chat in just a second. But if you're leaving us on YouTube now, again. Thanks for joining in. Hey, there's lots of evergreens here in our channel. Don't forget you can go over and catch Cadet Alice. I just posted a new Cadet Alice in honor of Prodigy's debut on Netflix. We're just about to the end of the season run. I think this was one, um, 115, I think. Yes, 115. So we've got four more to post with my granddaughter Alice uh, she's seven and it's awesome it's, it's as much fun to sit and watch Prodigy with her and talk about it as it is to get the perspective of our European and global fans I should say that we've got Aussies Narda I know you're out there we have all kinds of folks um, in and around that's why I do this at this time of year so if you're watching this later on on YouTube thanks so much give a listen on Tuesdays live when you can and check out the rest of the entire Trekland. We even have Life Support Live is still up. My two-year pandemic podcast I co-hosted with the great geek psychologist, Dr. Ali Matu. Uh, we had a great, great time. We'll still do occasional specials from time to time, but all 80-something episodes are still up there, and I think they're still pretty still pretty awesome. <laughs> they're, I think they're going to be timeless, too, for a long time. With that, everybody, uh, as we head into the uh, weekend and the New Year's, if I don't see you or cross paths with you before next Tuesday, everybody, please, please have a happy New Year. Look forward to 2024. And I say you can do that, especially if you, you know, stay healthy, do all the things. And yeah, there's a new strain of COVID coming back. Not that it's, we're going to, have a pandemic lockdown the ill effects of strains and variations are nothing to take take for granted everybody just take care out there would you please and of course stay woke check the sources oh the deep fakes and everything all the crazy misinformation and the non-information uh, are going to be thick and fast so pay attention everybody but sure happy new year and truck well. <laughs>